Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor today to have a Hilltopper alumni chat with the class of 1965, John Fox. John, welcome. I'm so thrilled that you, you stopped in to chat with me today. How you doing? Well, I've been better and I've been worse. <laughs> uh, I've been better when I was in school and had the chance to, in two years, win 18 football games Wow! in 1964 and 65 with some of the greatest people I ever knew. That is awesome. Uh, some are still here, some are not. not. Uh, I miss the ones that aren't here. I've had a chance to talk to some of the people that are still here. Uh, Larry Frankenbach, the Sarge, uh, played at Memphis State. Now it's Memphis, University of Memphis. Uh, I hope to see Larry Friday night at the school. Now Friday night, you mentioned Friday night. Uh, I, I think uh, we got an exciting night Friday night. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why you're coming to school Friday night. Well, there's a special reunion of all the classes at Hillwood High School. From 1964? 1964 was our first graduating class. There was a misnomer about that, but I, I participated uh, in the second graduating class. I was there to watch the first graduating class in 1964. I started in 1959 at Hillwood Junior High School. Okay. And I, I was there for six years. I played football for six years. That's awesome. Uh, I played against Jolton High School. Yes. When we only had a sophomore class. Well, that's and awesome. we had to play against senior high school ball players. Now you were telling me a little story about the very first game at Hillwood by which Hillwood did not wear their Kelly green and white that game. Tell us that story. Uh, we were in the ninth grade and we played actually not even on Hillwood's football uh, field. We played next door at H.G. Hill Elementary School. And the only uniforms we had belonged to the elementary school. Their colors were red and white. Uh, and it took about a half a year for us to finally get our school colors, which were Kelly green and white. Now, the, the uniforms that Hill would have today and some of the colors they have, have incorporated gray, right, right. which at the time we didn't have gray right. in our uniforms. We only had Kelly green and white. I don't know if you've seen it, but we, we, uh, we've gone back to the traditional Kelly green and white as we wrap up our years uh, on the campus there at Hickory Valley and Davidson. And uh, we do have an alumni tribute uniform that uh, featured both the colors of Bellevue High School and Hillwood High School for a special game that we did in honor of their alumni so that they could celebrate the first homecoming game they had in 40 years. And uh, that, that's that been well received and the kids actually love wearing that alumni tribute uniform as well. But yes, Kelly green and white. That, that's, I've often said I'm Kelly to the core because uh, going to, to Hillwood High School, that's kind of where you know, the blood runs Kelly as, as an old hilltopper, and I hear that in you as well. The How'd y'all fit into those uniforms from the elementary school? Uh, I was a pretty good-sized boy when I was in the... Well, that's uh, right. Y'all were ninth in, graders, though, ninth right? Ninth grade, So yeah. that helped. Y'all were only one year removed yeah, from... Yeah, I, uh, I... But I was still pretty good-sized. I was, I was close to six foot tall when I was in, in the ninth grade and weighed about 205. Uh, Do you have any eligibility left? We could use some more big linemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I'm still I'm six one, and I'm right at two seventy. So, oh, buddy, I, I could still probably play tackle. I, I still don't have any foot speed. That's why uh, <laughs> the Army and Mississippi State didn't ask me to play right. for them back in '65. Now everybody's going on a campus tour uh, as part of this all alumni. Uh, homecoming game and just for those listening in just a, a brief reminder the all alumni tailgate begins at uh, four o'clock and ends at around six o'clock people will wrap up between six and six thirty so they can be back into the stadium 
uh, for kickoff and in, in, in advance of the game. So we're all going to sing the alma mater together. Do you remember singing the alma mater at uh, during your days, or had that not not been written yet? My memory goes back to 1964 because of the first class and we didn't have an alma mater. And uh, I was looking on Facebook today and someone thought that someone from Vanderbilt had written Hillwood's alma mater. But uh, as memory serves me, uh, a very intelligent young lady in my class named Susan Bugle is the young lady that they had a contest. Okay. And Susan was the uh, rendition of the alma mater was selected by the officers of the class. Right. I know it has the same uh, the melody. The, the melody is always the same. Of, of, of right. But you know, the words, but, right. Susan wrote, wrote the poem well, that's neat. That's neat to know. I mean, these are all precious gems of history that I'm thrilled we're getting on, on video today. And, uh, but uh, I, uh, I got some messages from uh, Diane Holland, who's the lady I went to school with. She wasn't aware of that, but I think if people go back to their memories and, and look, uh, and if they go back in the archives of the school, uh, they'll, they'll look and see. If you go back in the football archives, you'll see that the first game that we won was a two to nothing lambasting of Jolton High School. Now two to nothing, that's a safety. That's a safety. Or that's back in the day, I think that was also the score they gave a forfeit. Yeah. Um, so, but it was an actual played game. That it was a played game. Only a safety was scored. Uh, only a safety was scored. And somewhere in the archives, I hope that football is still somewhere in a box over at the school and you guys have taken good care of it. Well, therein lies a really good question on a lot of memorabilia. You know, in today's digital world, everything is preserved in photography instead of stacked in trophies. And uh, I know there's been a proposal for in the new school for there to be a historical room for both Bellevue and uh, Hillwood alumni to create a place where people can kind of look at the histories of, of both schools and, and have a place for both alumni groups to meet separately as well as together in support of the new school. So let's hope that uh, anybody watching this video starts thinking about any old Hillwood archives that they have that they might want to lend to that room one day when we open up in two years from now. I was looking on Facebook and I saw some photos from uh, the Tennessean right. that showed pictures of our entire football team. Right back in 64, 65, and a stack of the alignment. And I noticed some guys that unfortunately are not here anymore. Sure. That I played ball with. Now the very first year of Hillwood High School where they had a the building open to conduct school, not graduating class, was what year? 59. 59. And okay. it was a junior high school. Yeah, I thought that was correct. And that that was, on our, it was on our on, seal. It was on Hickory Valley Road. Right. Uh, H.G. Hill Elementary School was behind it. We had to dress in the high school or the junior high school right. and then run across the yard from H.G. Hill Elementary School into a field Back behind next, it. next to the driving range, right, right. the golf driving range, sure. and practice. Football, that was football where, team still practice there today. That's where we pra that's where yeah. we practice football. That's back there by the softball field for anybody listening yeah. right now. Yeah, we didn't. Now the hill building, as what we call it, was the the elementary school that you're discussing. Right. Right. Um, that that's really neat. Now and so in '59 it started, and you started school there in in, in, 59, in '59. I, I I went to elementary school at Richland Elementary School over on Charlotte Pike. Okay. And across the street from it was. The Bel Air Drive-In Theater. Oh yeah. When, uh, some of some but, of our alumni are going to know what this is, and some of our newer people are saying, "What in the what world the are they talking?" Is a drive-in theater. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went to school at Richland, and and if I had been a year older, I would have gone to Cone High School. Right. Right. But uh, but because I was a year younger, I went, I finished up at Richland, and I was in the first school 
at Hillwood. So when Hillwood opened up, it was to take some of the student body or zoning that, that Cone had previously had? Right. Okay. And they also took people from Brookmead Elementary School right. and H.G. Hill right. and, uh, and uh, Martha Volt. Was there another high school that also then gave some of their zoning to Hillwood other than Cone? I don't think so. I don't think we got any kids from uh, from Hillsboro. Right. I think that was all. And so uh, Bellevue High School, of course, started in 31. Bellevue was, uh, we did get some kids from Bellevue eventually. Okay. And they closed it. Oh, well, yes, have, in 1980, I, sure, yes. I had some very, I have some friends that are not too happy to be that. Yeah, they, 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 had a, they had a passionate uh, community over their school and and uh, we're actually excited. You know, their loyalty to public high school education is now run for 90 years. They supported their school and then, of course, once uh, they joined up with uh, us at Hillwood, I was part of that freshman class in that merger. Um, uh, they've led enrollment for our school as a community since that day. So that's yeah. 90 years running. So they And I love playing on their football field. They had one of the best football fields that I ever played on the grass. It was just outstanding. Yeah, they're pretty pretty passionate about things, and and they're pretty excited about this school coming back to them uh, here in class, uh, fall of uh, what is that? Twenty three. Yes, I think it is. Fall of twenty three. Year before. Yeah, so we got two years to go. Um, well, so, I hope another thought. Yeah. I hope when they build the football field, they get it done before they do what they did to us which is they built the football field at Hillwood and they put sand on it <laughs> and they didn't turn the sand on. So the first game we played there, uh, when you put your knuckles or when you put your hand down it, the sand came up to my wrist. <laughs> and it covered, the sand went, covered our shoes. Wow. And they, because they didn't turn the sand under. Right. Because they didn't want, they were trying to give the grass right. some, some, put some water in it. And they, so the first three or four games we played in it, it was like playing in the, the, the beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, so you went uh, all four years. Um, do you recall who your team captains were during that time? Uh, you went six years, excuse me. And, and how, what team captains do you recall any? Well, the I remember it, when I was a junior, it was uh, Ronnie Medlin. He was our quarterback and our team captain. Uh, and I think he was the captain for when I was a freshman and a junior and a sophomore. And uh, then when Ronnie graduated in 64, uh, then Manley Mixon. Right, I've heard that name Manley, a lot. Uh, Unfortunately, Manley just passed away this past year. Mm. Uh, and uh, I said something to some folks, and I, I said, uh, Manley, uh, when he graduated from uh, Hillwood, uh, he, got, he got a scholarship to play at the University of Tennessee, not as a quarterback, but as a linebacker. Right. They put some weight on him, and he played as a linebacker at UT. That's a tough quarterback that can make that transition. Oh, he, they just, he was a he was some ball player, and unfortunately, uh, uh, he lost the last ball game that we played together in against Chattanooga Brainerd in uh, Hillwood. At the time, we had an enrollment of about 1,900 students, and Brainerd had over 5,000 kids. They were the McGavock of Chattanooga. Right. And uh, of all their of all their so uh, seniors at Chattanooga Brainerd. Every one of them had scholarships to universities. Right. So we played, we played a college team from Chattanooga. Okay. Wow. And so uh, we they they took us to the, to the woodshed. <laughs> but, uh, so tell me uh, some of the uh, the teachers or coaches that kind of made an impact in your life when you were at Hillwood. Uh, well, Coach McKinney, Coach Coach. Uh, 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 Zap, Coach uh, Dickerson, uh, God, I just the, I, I was just talking about one uh, today, and I just I, he just went blank on me. Uh, the, the assistant coach, uh, Jeanette. Jeanette, thank you, Marvin Jeanette. Yes, sir. 
Uh, he was there when I was at Hillwood. Uh, Marvin could bench press his own weight. He, he had some serious forearms, even when, even when I came through yes. in '84. And uh, uh, so they were they were the coaches on the coaches. Uh, John G. Shoemaker. Right. He was. He, I, he taught me for four years of science. Okay. And he was a character. And he was also there when I was at Hill. And uh, he was, he was my science teacher for four years. Uh, and uh, I, those were the teachers that made the most influence. Which which teacher was the toughest, and you probably learned the most from? Uh, Academically. The toughest teacher. There's family members right now sitting around going, I wonder if they're going to say my mother. <laughs> well, I, the, the, I heard a, about a lot of tough teachers, but I didn't have them as, as a teacher. Miss Trammell was the lady I heard the most about being a tough teacher, but a right. fair teacher. Yes. And Jimmy was a, a friend. Right. His, his, her son. Uh, and um, Bellevue had a good athlete, Nevin Trammell. I don't know if they're related or not. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I had a hard time with math, uh, and uh, uh, I had I didn't take calculus and stuff like that. But I did have uh, uh, math was a rough su subject and. Uh, what what class did you enjoy the most? Uh, history classes. Really? Yeah. Who taught that class that you recall? Coach McKinney was my best teacher. I, wow. I told the story. Uh, uh, my my senior year, he taught me uh, history. I, I I don't remember which which history it was. Maybe it was American history or civics or whatever they want to call it now. Uh, <laughs> And I, kept, I did a number on him. I brought a recorder. I brought a, I brought a recorder to class. It was a, 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 a Panasonic with the C-cell batteries and a handheld microphone. A cassette recorder or a reel? Or? A, a, it was a reel-to-reel -reel recorder. Wow, okay. And uh, about halfway through the class, he saw me with it. Right. And I thought, oh Lord, I'm in trouble now. And instead of him sending me to, uh, to Principal Wright's office, uh, he took the he took the recorder, I mean the microphone from me, and he read the final test into the recorder. Wow! So guess what grade I got on the final test. <laughs> so you went home and listened to your recording over and over. I listened to the recording and I, I still made a beat on the You know, that's kind of neat that, you know, in today's world, we have a lot of special needs classes where kids can get special attention to make sure they learn. And there you were trying to record the class. He picked up on that and he, he read it out to you so you could go home and learn. That's, and I did. That's that's pretty neat. That's kind of a uh, and still made a B on the class. But. You you and you and he were both being innovative all all the way back then. But uh, he was he was a, he was a, a great teacher and a great coach. Uh, Albert Gaines, Mr. Who Gaines. was Mr. Gaines was uh, probably the, he he played at Vanderbilt right, uh, and had lost his. I think I'm not sure whether he got hurt or something happened there. I don't, I don't know whether he finished a f his, all his playing time there or what, but he taught me more about football as, as, as a player right. than all the other coaches. He taught me how to block a, get, how to block a punt right. uh, or how to help Jeff Gorn, who was our, who was our all city uh, linebacker. Right. How to help Jeff block a punt? Right, and he blocked two of them during the season. Right, you crack down on the man and free him up. No, how do you do that? Grab the grab the guy by the shoulder pads in the back and roll him. <laughs> it was holding. It was illegal. <laughs>
but I got it done anyway. And Jeff would just leap over, would leap over me and the guy I was holding on to. All right, Coach Moore, in advance, I'm letting you know that uh, your players are not to listen not, to that. Not allowed to do that. <laughs> Especially if they get caught. <laughs> All right, now. But it was a smooth move, Coach. <laughs> so um, uh, we, but, we get but, all the but way. We, but we got, but we got, we got stuff done. Uh, I uh, I played all the games the senior except for one, and uh, I got hurt the week before. I got my knee messed up and. Uh, the coaches would not let me play. The only game I played six years of football forward to play in. And it was against Cone High School. Right. My father went to Cone High School. Uh, he was there in 1940 and then he had to go to war. Right. So he didn't graduate, hmm. but he played there. I can go back in the, uh, the archives of Nashville, Tennessee and, right. and see where he played. Right. Uh, and I had to pace back and forth on the sideline, and they made a joke of it that the grass would not grow on the sideline where Fox paced back and forth and killed all the grass. <laughs> but uh, that, that was, but my dad. So your dad played on Sykes Field. He played on Sykes Field, and I used to listen. We lived on, on Robinson Road in West Nashville, and on Friday night, you could hear the Cone Band marching from the school. Yes. Hear them drums go, and you knew it was football time in right. West Nashville. Well, because you could neat. hear the drums marching from the school down to Sykes Field, and it just, the blood would just start yes. boiling. And it was great. And my dad, who was a police officer for 43 years, and a constable in West Nashville, when we had to leave town, or when we had to go from one school to another, his car had lights and siren on it. He would lead the bus. And if the school would not provide escort, he would lead the bus and make sure, and sometimes he had to escort us from the bus to the field because some of the places we played weren't real friendly to Hillwood High School. Right, right. And uh, so uh, a lot of kids remember uh, my dad and uh, him taking care of us. That, that's so, a neat story. I'd love for that tradition to come back uh, one day as we lead our team around the, the state to play. Yeah, because uh, I don't know if Metro or, or if they have any right. provisions to So So if, if you're looking back at your high school days, and, and uh, I know you got a lot of precious memories and, and um, is there anything else that you might mention that was just kind of a fond memory you have of, of your days of, of walking our campus? And I'm gonna assist you just a moment to get rid of a bee. Oh, he's yeah, I, I saw he was around you. There. I was. There you go. Yeah, I'm not. They're not my favorite. So any any. Uh... Well, the the social life, we had social lives. Uh, my prom was special. It was at the school. Right. Now nowadays they go to hotels and right, right, right. other places and and I miss that. I think I think that should be, should be a tradition of going back to that. Right, right. Uh, maybe they can't do it now. It's prohibitive, or you know. And with the pandemic, right, and all the stuff that's going on now, it sure. would be very difficult to do. Sure. Um, but you remember those days? I remember of those days. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we had, we had uh, living in Nashville. You have a special thing. We had uh, Charlie McCoy and the escorts. Uh, I don't know how many people know who Charlie McCoy is. You're talking well, about a band, right? Well, you're talking about a band. Yes. You're not talking about canned music. You're not talking right. about people that you can't touch and feel and right, right, walk right. up to and right. say wonderful music. And you know, and these guys know how to play music. So live band performed at your homecoming. And a live band, yeah. That's exciting. And, uh, but, uh, so that was, that was fun. And, uh, and you're talking about, oh, we used to go over on Charlotte Pike and go to restaurants over there after a game. And sure. Burger shops. Yeah. And, and, and eat hamburgers. And, uh, my dad or some other father would come over and say, it's, 
It's on me, kids. Right. You know, milkshakes, hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries. That, that's, you know. That's a neat memory. Uh, of course, before the game, uh, we used to eat steak and and then the coaches had this wonderful idea that we would eat powdered food. <laughs> Have you ever eaten powdered food before a game? Uh, no. <laughs> well, they they decided when we were seniors that uh, they would get this powdered mix and they would mix this stuff up and it would go right through you. And so we... Uh, <laughs> We, for about three games, we had that stuff, and thank goodness they stopped that. <laughs> so, as you kind of think back to your great experiences, um, if you had it to do it over again, or if you wanted to, to share advice for kids today about savoring these years of being a high school student, what are some of your thoughts about just taking advantage of this time of, you know, being kind to your fellow classmates and getting to know your teachers and just kind of savoring this time as a high school student because for you I'm sure it is like me it just seems like yesterday I was a high school student and that's back in 84 and for you 65 you graduated um, what would you what would you tell young people today about really taking advantage of this opportunity of enjoying their youth don't squander it don't waste it get every minute of it enjoy every minute of it uh, set the telephone down the, the you know get that get that little fun thing that you stare at all day long whether it be a computer or uh, or a cell, cell phone. phone lay it down get outside enjoy the weather enjoy the people uh, you know join groups join clubs you know i I got the I got the service award, the the audio visual award. I got that award as a senior honor. I didn't belong to the club. <laughs> I ran projectors, film strip machines. I worked in the library and helped, you know, run that stuff, mm -hmm. and got the award by doing right by going out and helping people. That's awesome. Go out and help people. If somebody needs you to do something, go out and do it. Don't be always have to be asked. Wow. You know, that, that's all it takes. Wow. Help your friend. You know, if you see somebody on the side of the road that's got a flat tire, stop. Right. right. Help them. Talking about helping your teachers and, and helping you your know, classmates. And, that's and, great. And, you know, you may not you may not be in somebody's class. You know, but get to know the teachers. You, you next year you may be in their class. Right. That that that's great, great advice. Um, you know, this weekend we celebrate you know six decades of Hillwood alumni coming back to campus, and I'm thrilled about so many that are talking about coming. And um, you know, you've kind of shared with me that you've you know uh, got some real knee problems and and a few health. Uh, things going on, but uh, you're going to be there, right? Lord willing, the creek don't rise. And so uh, I just kind of give you an opportunity to, because I'll post this this afternoon to challenge your fellow alumni to, to also come out and uh, be a part of this great weekend. Go ahead. Yeah, I uh, I have no cartilage in my knees. I I, I got injured uh, on uh, homecoming night, 1965. I, they they carried me off the field, put me in an ambulance, took me to the old Baptist Hospital, and they, the lady, the cutest little nurse I ever saw, wanted to cut my pants off, and I said, no, nope, don't do that. So they raised it up. They took an X-ray. Uh, that Monday, I went to see Dr. Pinky Lipscomb. They named they named the Dagum Center after him after he passed away. But he wanted to do surgery on my knee that I would be on crutches for six weeks. And I said, no doc, I'll just tough it out. Mistake. <laughs> I should I should have gone and had the surgery, but I would have never played another ball game again. Now to kind of share 
the mentality of that. Even though, yes, we realize today that's a mistake, but that speaks a lot to how much football and being with those guys and those coaches meant to you, didn't Sure it? did. I, I had one chance. I was a senior in high school. I knew that if I passed it up, I probably, I knew with, with my limitation as far as foot speed, I weighed 235 pounds. Back then, that was a good size tackle in high school. Yes, it was. Now, I couldn't even play I couldn't play on the front line in a high school. Right. I probably couldn't play in junior high school. <laughs> but but it meant that much to back you. Back then, it meant that much not to let the coaches down, not to let the team down, not to let Hillwood down. But so I played, as it turned out, by favoring that knee, I favored the other knee. So I have no cartilage in either knee now. Right. And I've had other health issues that I can't get knee replacements now. But you're still coming tomorrow well, night. I'm coming to the game. That's, that's awesome. That's and, so awesome. And Cliff has said, John, we can roll you out on the track. <laughs> so I said, okay, because I can't climb those bleachers, Cliff. Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way. You'll give me some players. You have the will and we'll find a way. There you go. Um, so I appreciate that. But... I invite everybody in the sound of my voice and in the sound of this film to come out and join us, cheer for the toppers, cheer for the school, cheer for the kids. They need your support, not only in voice, but in a monetary way if you can see fit, because uh, it, it, it's not easy. It's, they're building a new school, but the other stuff in that side of that school doesn't come cheap. And if you can help them, you see fit, go for it. That's all I ask. Let me take a few seconds to also thank you. Uh, people watching this video don't realize that kind of what uh, began this uh, little meeting was I got a call uh, from Mr. Fox saying I'd like to meet up with you. I've got a check I'd like to give you for my, my beloved Hillwood football program. And uh, they made a very generous donation today uh, to bless the, the young men. And we've got a young team this year, Mr. Fox. That uh, you know, And I am John to anybody. <laughs> Mr. Fox died in 1990. He was my daddy. Anybody knows me. Uh, everybody I played ball with called me John. Everybody in school called me John. And Mr. Fox was a great man. But... Uh, well, you'll have to pardon Cliff. me. M Mr. Mitchell re requires that I call people by their proper name according to him. So I, well, I still follow my dad's uh, advice. Yeah, he'd probably smack you, but <laughs> my, and my, if my dad were alive, he'd smack me too. But, <laughs> but, uh, but thank just, you so I'm much. Plain old John. Thank you for that generous gift of, to football. And I, and I hope those that are listening to this kind of heed your call to, to bless today's kids that uh, need that support more than ever. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if more people kind of look at, at uh, back at their precious memories as you have and, and step up to make sure today's kids also share those opportunities and memories, uh, we will have a special place, not just where we are now, but as we go to our new campus. Um, if we continue to grow this support from our alumni who we have, as you know, we've got just an outstanding group of alumni. Hillwood and Bellevue. And a lot of people that have been in this town for a long time, a lot of people that have gone on to, to raise beautiful families and run great companies and, and just so many different attributes that can give back kind of in their senior years. And, and we're excited about bringing folks back to that calling to give back to their days of glory. So thank you for the time you spent with us. Uh, we value you so much. And this video will be a beautiful archive of, of this first all alumni homecoming game. And uh, I'm gonna save this. And when we create that historical room uh, at the new school, this video will be able to be seen from now to a long time. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff, for the chance to do it. Thank you.